God never changes. Circumstances do. Now that you know what God promised the sons of Israel, when their relationship to Him was governed by the terms of the second legal agreement He made with them at Mount Sinai, you need to know what He said to them, when the time came for Moses to hand down the promise before he died. I have already told you He did that by means of the blessing recorded in Deuteronomy 33, and I have explained those things in the inheritance of the believer. Volume 1. But in case you need a reminder, here is my interim translation of what Moses said. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verses 1 through 29, my interim translation. Now this is the blessing with which Moses, the man of the living God, blessed the sons of Israel before his death. And he said, His majesty will come in out of Sinai and he will rise for them out of Seir, he will shine forth out of Mount Paran, and a holy one will come out of ten thousand, out of his right hand, the fire of a decree for them. He will definitely cherish peoples, all his holy ones will be in your hand, and they will follow in your footsteps. He will carry some of your words. Moses commanded a teaching for us as the possession of the congregation of Jacob so that there will be a king in Jeshurun when he rounds up the heads of the people together with the branches of Israel. Reuben will live and not die, but there will be a small number of his adult males. But then he said this concerning Judah, Your Majesty, listen to the voice of Judah and bring him to his people. He will argue for him with his hands, but you must be a helper against his adversaries. And concerning Levi he said, Your Thummim and your Urim belong to a man with your virtue, the one that you tested at Massa, the one that you argued with beside the waters of Meribah, the one who will say to his father and to his mother, I have never seen him. And he will not recognize his brothers, and he will not know his sons, because they must stand watch over your statements, and they must safeguard your legal agreement. They will teach your decisions based on the truth to Jacob, and your teaching to Israel. They will assign incense for your nose, even a whole burnt offering on your altar. Your Majesty, bless his entourage, and take great pleasure in the deed his hands have done. Strike the loins of those who rise up against him with a perfect blow, and of those who hate him, so that they cannot rise up. Concerning Benjamin he said, The beloved of his majesty will reside securely beside him, sheltered beside him all day, even residing between his shoulders. And concerning Joseph he said, His land is part of the blessings of his majesty, part of the best produce of the sea of waters, part of the best produce of the dew, even part of the best produce of the deep that lies below even part of the best produce of the crop of the sun, even part of the best produce of the edible fruit of the cycles of the moon, even part of the best produce of the top of the mountains of Kedem, even part of the best produce of the hills of a burning eternity, even part of the best produce of the earth and her fullness, even the goodwill of the one who resided in the prickly bush, will come to the head of Joseph, even to the crown of the head of the Nazarite of his brothers. Splendor belongs to him, the firstborn of his spring wall, but his horns are the horns of a wild ox, he will but peoples, together with them to the ends of the earth. And they will be the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they will be the thousands of Manasseh. And to Zebulun he said, Rejoice Zebulun when you go out, and Issachar in your tents. They will summon peoples to a mountain they will sacrifice communal sacrifices of a declaration of not guilty there, when a tremendous number nurse on the seas, even on what is concealed in what is hidden in the sand. And concerning Gad he said, Blessed is the one who enlarges Gad. He will reside like a lioness with cubs, then he will tear an arm to pieces, even the crown of the head. But he will see what belonged to him at the beginning because a name, 
a share of what was inscribed has been concealed. So he will come with the heads of a people. He will make his majesty's declaration of not guilty, and his decisions based on the truth for Israel. And concerning Dan he said, Dan is the cub of a lioness, he will leap out of the snake. And concerning Naphtali he said, Naphtali will be satisfied with goodwill and filled with the blessing of his majesty, he will take possession of the sea and the south wind. And concerning Asher he said, Asher is more blessed than sons, he will be favored by his brothers, and he will dip his foot in the oil. Your bolts will be iron and bronze, and your endurance will be equal to your days. There is nobody like the God of Jeshurun, the one who rides the sea of waters when he helps you, but dust clouds in his pride. The living God of Kedem is a haven, with the eternally burning arms below. So he will drive an enemy away from before you, and he will say, Wipe him out, so that Israel may reside securely. Jacob's spring will be isolated to a land of grain and new wine. Even his sea of waters will miss the dew. You, O Israel, will be those who attain the resurrection. Who is like you? A people saved by his majesty, by the shield that helps you. Even the one who is the sword of your pride. So your enemies will be denied the truth about you, and you will tread on their high places. If you understand the significance of that blessing, you should be able to see the bigger picture within which it occurs. That is, God made Moses the heir of the promise, the sole member of corporate Israel, after he cut off all the other members of corporate Israel, after they sinned at Mount Sinai. Then he grafted them back in, by making them members of Moses' house. Since the promise would be lost if Moses did not hand it down to the next heir of the promise before he died. Moses did exactly what was required. He blessed corporate Israel and made him the heir of the promise. That's the short version of those events, but you also need to know how all the sons of Israel became members of corporate Israel, instead of just members of Moses' house. You can find those events described in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 1, through chapter 31, verse 30. That passage begins with this. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verses 1 through 26, my interim translation. Then Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, You must stand watch over all the commandment that I am going to command you today. So it must be on the day that you cross over the Jordan into the land that His Majesty, your God, is going to give to you, that you must raise up big stones for yourself and whitewash them with lime. Then, when you cross over, you must write all the words of this teaching on them, in order that you may go into the land that His Majesty, your God, is going to give to you. A land flowing with milk and honey, just as His Majesty, the God of your fathers spoke to you. So it must be that when you cross over the Jordan, you must raise up these stones on Mount Ebal, as I am going to command you today, and you must whitewash them with lime. Then you must build an altar for His Majesty, your God, there, an altar of stones, you must not move iron side to side on them. You must build the altar of His Majesty, your God, with complete stones, and you must offer burnt offerings to His Majesty, your God, on it and you must sacrifice peace offerings as communal sacrifices, and eat them there, and rejoice before His Majesty, your God. Then you must write on the stones all the words of this teaching, making good my explaining. Then Moses and the priests, the Levites, spoke to all Israel, saying, Shut up and listen, O Israel! This very day you have been brought about to become the people of His Majesty, your God. 
so you must listen to the voice of His Majesty, your God, and act in accordance with His commandments and His statutes, the ones that I am commanding you today. Then Moses commanded the people on that day saying, When you cross over the Jordan, these must stand up to bless the people on Mount Gerizim, Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin. And these must stand up for the curse on Mount Ebal, Reuben, Gad and Asher and Zebulun, Dan and Naphtali. Then the Levites must respond and say to every man of Israel with a raised voice, The man who makes a graven image or a cast image, what the hands of a craftsman makes, is an abomination to his majesty, and sets it up in secret is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must respond and say, Without doubt. Anyone who dishonors his father or his mother is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, Without doubt. Anyone who pulls back his neighbor's boundary is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, Without doubt. Anyone who intoxicates one who is blind through the way is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, Without doubt. Anyone who confuses the decision based on the truth of a temporary resident or fatherless child, or widow is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, Without doubt. Anyone who lies with his father's woman, since he has uncovered his father's skirt, is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, Without doubt. Anyone who lies with any beast is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, Without doubt. Anyone who lies with his sister, the daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother, is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, Without doubt. Anyone who lies with his mother in law is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, Without doubt. Anyone who attacks his neighbor in secret is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, Without doubt. Anyone who takes a bribe to attack a soul with innocent blood is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, without doubt. Whoever does not confirm the words of this teaching, by acting in accordance with them is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, without doubt. The takeaways from that chapter are just as easy to understand as those from Leviticus 26, provided you are willing to accept them. Here they are. 1. The majority of the occurrences of the second person, personal pronoun, in that passage are singular, you, rather than plural, you. When Moses uses the plural form, he is always addressing the people as individuals. When he uses the singular form, he is addressing them as a single individual, corporate Israel. 2. The point of the passage which is to emphasize the responsibility of the individual as it pertains to the corporate body, is clearly stated in verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26, my interim translation. Whoever does not confirm the words of this teaching, by acting in accordance with them, is irrevocably cursed. And all the people must say, without doubt. 3. The essence of the passage is summed up in verses 9 and 10, where Moses and the Levites tell the sons of Israel, the obligation they have taken on by becoming members of corporate Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verses 9 through 10, my interim translation. Then Moses and the priests, the Levites, spoke to all Israel, saying, Shut up and listen. O Israel! This very day you have been brought about to become the people of His Majesty, your God. So you must listen to the voice of His Majesty, your God, 
and act in accordance with His commandments and His statutes, the ones that I am commanding you today. The emphasis on the obligation of the corporate body continues on in Deuteronomy chapter 28, the chapter that follows. So with very few exceptions, the second person, personal pronouns, are all singular, to indicate that the obligation to maintain adherence to the terms of the legal agreement falls on the corporate body. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 68, my interim translation. So if you carefully listen to the voice of His Majesty, your God, to stand watch, to act in accordance with all His commandments that I am commanding you today. It will happen that His Majesty, your God Elyon, will put you over all the Gentiles of the earth. And all these blessings will come upon you, and overtake you, when you listen to the voice of His Majesty, your God. You will be blessed in the city, and you will be blessed in the field. The fruit of your belly will be blessed, even the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your beasts. The offspring of your draft animals and the newborn of your flock. Your garden basket and your kneading bowl will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in, and you will be blessed when you go out. His Majesty will cause your enemies those who rise up against you, to be beaten before you. They will come out against you by one way, but they will flee before you by seven ways. His Majesty will command that the blessing be with you in your pantries and in each of your undertakings, and He will bless you in the land that His Majesty, your God, is going to give you. His Majesty will raise you up for Himself, as a holy people, just as He swore an oath to you, when you stand watch over the commandments of His Majesty, your God, and walk in His ways. Then all the peoples of the earth will see that the name of His Majesty has been called over you, and they will be afraid of you. So because of good behavior, His Majesty will leave you a remnant from the fruit of your belly, and from the fruit of your beast, and from the fruit of your ground on the ground that His Majesty swore an oath to your fathers to give to you. His Majesty will open up His good storehouse the sea of waters for you, by giving your land rain in its time and by blessing everything your hand has made. Then you will lend to many Gentiles, but you will not borrow. Then His Majesty will make you the head and not the tail, and you will only be at the top, and you will not be at the bottom because you will listen to the commandments of His Majesty, your God, that I am commanding you today, to stand watch, and to act in accordance with them. So you must not turn aside, right or left, from any of the words that I am commanding you today, to walk behind other gods, to be their slave. But if you do not listen to the voice of His Majesty, your God, to stand watch, to act in accordance with all His commandments and statutes that I am commanding you today, it will happen that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. You will be irrevocably cursed in the city, and you will be irrevocably cursed in the field. Your garden basket and your kneading bowl will be irrevocably cursed. The fruit of your belly will be irrevocably cursed, even the fruit of your ground the offspring of your draft animals and the newborn of your flock. You will be irrevocably cursed when you come in, and you will be irrevocably cursed when you go out. His Majesty will send the irrevocable curse, the panic, and the rebuke against you, against each of your undertakings that you do, until you are wiped out, and until you quickly go to hell, because of the badness of your practices, because you abandoned me. His Majesty will make the epidemic cling to you, until it finishes you off from on the ground, where you are going in to take possession of it. His Majesty will viciously attack you with emaciation, and with inflammation and with fever, even a dangerously high fever, and with a sword, and with blight, and with mildew, and they will pursue you until you go to hell. Then your sea of waters, 
the one that is over your head will be bronze, and the earth under you, iron. His majesty will make the rain of your land dusty powder, and dust will come down on you, out of the sea of waters, until it wipes you out. His majesty will give you up, to be struck down before your enemies. You will go out against him one way, but you will flee seven ways before him. Then you will become sheer terror to all the kingdoms of the earth. But your corpse will become food, for every flyer of the sea of waters, and for the beasts of the earth, and there will not be anyone who causes trembling. His Majesty will viciously attack you with the blisters of Egypt, and with tumors, and with a rash, and with an itch from which you will not be able to be healed. His Majesty will viciously attack you with insanity, and with blindness, and with bewilderment of heart. Then you will be feeling around at noon, just like the one who is blind feels around in nether gloom, and you will not be successful with your ways, but you will definitely always be shortchanged and robbed, and there will not be anyone who can save you. You will betroth a woman, but another man will have sexual intercourse with her. You will build a house, but you will not dwell in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will not begin to use it. Your ox will be slaughtered before your eyes, but you will not eat any of it. Your jackass will be stolen in front of you, and he will not be returned to you. Your flock will be given to your enemies, and you will not have anyone who can save you. Your sons and your daughters are going to be given to another people, and your eyes are going to see it and long for them all day long, but your hand will not have any God. A people that you do not know, will eat the fruit of your ground and all that you produce, and you will be nothing but shortchanged and squashed all day long, then you will be driven crazy by what your eyes see, by what you see. His Majesty will viciously attack you on the knees, and on the thighs, with blisters so bad that you will not be able to heal from the sole of your foot, even up to the crown of your head. His Majesty will make you and your king, the one that you have raised up over you, walk to a nation that you and your fathers have not known, and you will work for other wood and stone gods there. Then you will become something devastated, a comparison, and an object of ridicule, among all the peoples, wherever His Majesty drives you. You will bring out more than enough seed to the field, but you will round up just a little, because the swarming locust will gobble it up. You will plant and work vineyards, but you will not drink their wine or gather a crop, because the insects will consume it. You will have olive trees within all your boundary but you will not apply oil, because your olives will come clear off. You will engender sons and daughters, but they will not be yours, because they will go into captivity. The cricket will take possession of all your trees and the fruit of your ground. The temporary resident that is in your midst, will come up over you higher and higher, but you will go down lower and lower. He will lend to you but you will not lend to him, he will become the head, and you will become the tail. So all these curses will come on you, and pursue you, and overtake you, until you are wiped out, because you did not listen to the voice of his majesty, your God, to stand watch over his commandments and his statutes, the ones that he commanded you, and they will become a sign and a harbinger on you and on your seed as long as a burning eternity because you did not work for His Majesty, your God, with joy and a good heart, because of the large amount of everything, you will work for your enemies, the ones that His Majesty sends against you, with hunger and with thirst, and with nakedness, and with a lack of all things, and He will put an iron yoke on the back of your neck until He has wiped you out. His Majesty will raise up over you a nation from a long ways away, from the end of the earth, just like the griffin vulture soars, a nation whose tongue you will not have heard, 
A nation with a strong countenance, who will not lift up the countenance of an old person, and will not show favor to a youth. And he will consume the fruit of your beasts, and the fruit of your ground, until you are wiped out, one who will not leave you a remnant of grain, new wine, or fresh olive oil, offspring of your draft animals or newborn of your flock, until he sends you to hell. And he will bind you up in every one of your gates, until your walls, the high and enclosed ones in which you trust, come down throughout all your land, and he will bind you up, in every one of your gates throughout all your land, the land that his majesty, your God, gave you. Then you will consume the fruit of your belly, the flesh of your sons and your daughters, the ones that his majesty, your God, has given you during the siege, and during the constraint, with which your enemy constrains you. The eye of the man who is delicate, and very delightful within you, will be bad toward his brother and toward the woman, in the fold of his garment, and toward what is left of his sons that have been left behind as a remnant, not giving any one of them, any of the flesh of his sons that he will consume, because he has nothing left during the siege and during the constraint, with which your enemy will constrain you in all your gates. The eye of the delicate and delightful woman within you, the one who would not test the sole of her foot, by placing it on the earth, because of delighting herself and because of her delicateness will be bad toward the man in the fold of her garment, and toward her son, and toward her daughter and toward the afterbirth that comes out from between her legs and toward the sons that she engendered, because she will consume them in secret for lack of all things during the siege and during the constraint, with which your enemy will constrain you in your gates. If you do not stand watch to act in accordance with all the words of this teaching that have been written in this scroll by fearing this honored and fearsome name, His Majesty, your God, then His Majesty will make the attacks against you and the attacks against your seed incomprehensible, intense attacks, but ones that prove worthy of belief, as well as torments, but ones that prove worthy of belief. And He will bring back on you every sexually transmitted disease of the Egyptians whose presence you cringe at the thought of, and they will cling to you. His Majesty will even bring up on you every cause of torment and every attack that is not written in the scroll of this teaching, until you are wiped out. Then you will be left a remnant of just a few adult males instead of what you had been, a large number like the stars of the Sea of Waters, because you did not listen to the voice of His Majesty, your God. Then it will happen that just as His Majesty was elated over you to do good things for you and to increase you, so also He will be elated over you to send you to hell and to wipe you out. So you will be torn away from the ground where you are going in to take possession of it. Then His Majesty will disperse you among all the peoples, from one end of the earth, to the other end of the earth, and there you will work for other gods gods of wood and stone that you and your fathers have not known. But you will not find peace in those nations, and there will be no resting place for the sole of your foot, and there His Majesty will give you an agitated heart and failing eyes and despair of soul. And your life will be hung up right out in front of you, and you will feel dread every night and every day, and no longer believe in your life. In the morning you will say, What will evening bring? And in the evening you will say, What will morning bring? Because of what your heart dreads, what you dread, and because of what your eyes see, what you see. Then His Majesty will bring you back to Egypt in ships by the way that I told you, you will not go on to see it again. And there you will offer to sell yourselves to your enemies as male slaves and as female slaves, but there will not be anybody to acquire you. If, while reading that chapter, you got a funny feeling that the Lord and Moses might be intentionally overdoing their emphasis on the singular you, just to make fun of fools who think they know when they don't. I have a hunch you may be right. The sick, sad, 
situation in academia today is, most folks who consider themselves to be Old Testament scholars, are about as dim-witted as they come when faced with texts like Deuteronomy chapter 28, and the prophets and apostles do tell us, God mocks those who think they know more than they actually know, so it doesn't seem too far-fetched to imagine there might be a bit of ridicule in the text above. The truth concerning corporate Israel should be fairly obvious if one just stops to consider the implications of what is stated in verses 54 through 57, and verses 62 and 63. In those two passages, individual members of corporate Israel are depicted as members of a corporate body that Moses addresses as a single person. Now that you have seen the emphasis in this text is on the corporate body rather than the individual members of that corporate body, go back and review the text of Leviticus chapter 26, which I showed you above. Once you are aware of the fact that Moses addresses the people as separate individuals at that time, it should be obvious that God had no confidence the people would ever respond to him with unity during their forty years in the wilderness. Under those circumstances, his use of the plural form of the second-person personal pronoun makes perfect sense. The truth is, when God spoke through Moses and Aaron, after the erection and consecration of the tabernacle, he was already planning to move on from the second legal agreement to the one before us here in Deuteronomy, yet a third legal agreement. And a follow-on truth to that one is this. When God spoke through Moses on this occasion, he was already planning to move on from this third legal agreement, to a fourth legal agreement. That was because he already knew the people were not going to adhere to the terms of this third legal agreement either. Moses is going to tell us about that in Deuteronomy chapter 30, so let's move on and look at Deuteronomy chapter 29. Deuteronomy chapter 29 Verses 1 through 29, my interim translation. These are the words of the legal agreement that His Majesty commanded Moses to cut with the sons of Israel, in the land of Moab, apart from the legal agreement that he cut with them at Horeb. So Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, You saw everything that His Majesty did before your eyes in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his slaves and to all his land, the great tests that your eyes saw, those great signs and harbingers. Yet his majesty has not given you a heart to know, or eyes to see, or ears to hear, up to this day. So I made you walk through the wilderness forty years, your cloaks did not wear out on you, your sandal did not wear out on your foot. You have not eaten bread, and you have not drunk wine or liquor so that you would know that I am His Majesty, your God. Then you came to this place, and Sihon, the king of Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out to meet us for battle, but we viciously attacked them and took their land, and gave it as an inheritance to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to half the branch of the Manassites. So you must stand watch over the words of this legal agreement and act in accordance with them, in order to gain insight into everything that you do. You are stationed today, all of you, before His Majesty, your God, your heads, your branches, your elders, and your overseers, every man of Israel, your little ones, your women, your temporary residents who are in the midst of your camps from the one who cuts your wood to the one who draws and carries your water, so that you may cross over in accordance with the legal agreement of His Majesty your God, and in accordance with the oath that His Majesty your God, is cutting with you today, in order to raise you up as a people for Himself today. Then He will become your God, just as He stated to you and just as He swore an oath to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So I am not cutting this legal agreement and this oath with you alone, because it is with him who is standing here with us today before his majesty our God, 
and with him who is not here with us today because you know that we dwelled in the land of Egypt and that we passed through in the midst of the Gentiles, that you passed through, and you saw their disgusting things and their idols, wood, and stone, and silver, and gold, that they had with them, so that there is no man, or woman, or family, or branch, whose heart does an about face today to walk away from his majesty our God to work for the gods of those Gentiles. So that there is no root among you bearing poison and wormwood as fruit. Then it will happen that, when he hears the words of this oath, he will bless himself in his heart, saying, Peace will be mine although I walk in the stubbornness of my heart, in order to sweep up the water along with the thirsty. His majesty will not be willing to forgive him because the anger of his majesty and his jealousy will smolder against that man, and all of the oath that is written in this scroll will lie down on him, and his majesty will wipe his name out from under the sea of waters. And his majesty will separate him out of all the branches of Israel for what is bad in accordance with all the oaths of the legal agreement that is written in this scroll of the teaching. Then the final generation. Your sons who rise up after you and the foreigner who comes in from a distant land, and sees the wounds from the attacks on that land, and the torments with which his majesty has tormented her, will say, All her land is burning molten rock and salt, it will never be sowed, so it will never sprout, and no vegetation will come up in it. Like the overthrowing of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zaboyim which His Majesty overthrew in His anger and in His rage. Then all the Gentiles will say, Why has His Majesty acted like this to this land? Why is this great anger white hot? Then they will say, Because they abandoned the legal agreement of His Majesty, the God of their fathers, the one that He cut with them when He brought them out of the land of Egypt. Then they went and worked for other gods and fell prostrate to them, gods whom they had not known, so he did not allot a share to them. So the anger of his majesty was inflamed against that land, to bring against it all the curse that is written in this scroll, and his majesty uprooted them from their ground with anger, and with rage, and with great wrath, and he threw them out into another land, as it is to this day. The things that have been hidden belong to His Majesty our God, but the things that have been revealed belong to us and to our sons as long as a burning eternity, to act in accordance with all the words of this teaching. The very first verse in the English translations of Deuteronomy chapter 29, is actually the final verse of Deuteronomy chapter 28, in the Hebrew Scriptures. That is because it refers back to the things Moses stated in the two previous chapters. The verse says this. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 1, my interim translation. These are the words of the legal agreement that His Majesty commanded Moses to cut with the sons of Israel, in the land of Moab, apart from the legal agreement that He cut with them at Horeb. From what Moses says in that chapter, we know that Deuteronomy chapter 27 and 28, lay out the essence of the legal agreement the sons of Israel accepted that day. We also know from the following passage, that the legal agreement would continue on, from one generation to the next, so as to include all the descendants of those who accepted the legal agreement the Lord offered at that time. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 14 and 15, my interim translation. So I am not cutting this legal agreement and this oath with you alone, because it is with him who is standing here with us today, before his majesty our God, and with him who is not here with us today. Now that you understand the basics regarding the three legal agreements that the Lord made with the sons of Israel, you need to take a close look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. The reason is, at this point in the text, Moses switches from speaking generally, regarding what the future holds for the sons of Israel, 
and begins to speak specifically concerning the future of corporate Israel. That is, as the master prophet he was, Moses begins to speak prophetically. As you read what Moses wrote, make note of the fact that he is consistently using the singular form, of the second person personal pronoun, to speak regarding the future of corporate Israel. The significance of that is not obvious at first glance, but he is describing what will happen after Jesus Christ becomes corporate Israel and corporate Israel finally does what God requires. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 through 20, my interim translation. And it will happen when all these words have come upon you, the blessing and the curse that I have put before you, and you have been restored to your heart among all the Gentiles where His Majesty your God, has banished you, and you return to His Majesty your God, and listen to His voice in accordance with everything that I am commanding you today, you and your sons, with all your heart and with all your soul, then His Majesty your God, will bring you back from your captivity, and He will have compassion on you, and return and gather you out of all the peoples where His Majesty your God, has dispersed you. If your banished one is at the end of the sea of waters, His Majesty your God, will gather you from there, and from there He will take you. And His Majesty your God, will bring you into the land that your fathers have taken possession of, and you will take possession of it, and He will do good things for you and increase you more than your fathers. And His Majesty your God, will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed, to love His Majesty your God, with all your heart and with all your soul, so that you live. And His Majesty your God, will put all these oaths on your enemies and on those who hate you, who pursued you. So you will come back and listen to the voice of His Majesty, and you will act in accordance with all of His commandments, the ones that I am commanding you today. Then His Majesty your God, will leave you a remnant because of all that your hand has done, in the fruit of your belly, and in the fruit of your beasts, and in the fruit of your ground, for what is good, because His Majesty will return to being elated over you, for what is good, just as He was elated over your fathers, because you will listen to the voice of His Majesty your God, to stand watch over His commandments and His statutes the thing that is written in this scroll of the teaching, because you will come back to His Majesty your God, with all your heart and with all your soul, because this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too incomprehensible for you and is not far away. It is not in the sea of waters, saying, Who will ascend for us to the sea of waters and take it for us, so that we may hear it and act in accordance with it? And it is not from the area beyond the sea, saying, Who will cross over for us to the area beyond the sea and take it for us, so that we may hear it and act in accordance with it? Because the word is very near to you, in your mouth and in your heart, so that you may act in accordance with it. Look! I have set before you today the life and the good thing, as well as the death and the bad thing because I am commanding you today, to love His Majesty your God, to walk in His ways and to stand watch over His commandments, and His statutes, and His judgments, so that you may live and become many, so that His Majesty your God, may bless you in the land where you are going in to take possession of it. But if your heart does not about face and you do not listen, and are banished, and fall prostrate to other gods, and work for them, I tell you today that you will definitely go to hell. You will not have extended days on the ground where you are going to cross over the Jordan to take possession of it. I have called the sea of waters and the earth to testify against you today, I have set before you the life and the death, the blessing and the curse, so choose the life so that you and your seed may live, by loving His Majesty your God by listening to His voice and by clinging to Him. Because He is your life and the length of your days for dwelling on the ground that His Majesty swore an oath to your fathers, to Abraham, 
to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them. Now that you know that passage is talking about the future of corporate Israel, after God offers the sons of Israel the new covenant that Jesus accepted when he was baptized by John the Baptist, it should be fairly obvious why Paul refers to verses 11 through 14 when he says this. Romans chapter 10, verses 6 through 8, HSSB. But the declaration of not guilty on the basis of belief in God's promise, says it this way, Do not say in your heart, Who will go up into heaven? That is, to bring the anointed one down. Or who will go down into the abyss? That is, to bring the anointed one up from those who are dead. But what does it say? The statement he made is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the statement he made concerning the belief in God's promise that we are preaching. Such are the vagaries of God's dealings with the sons of Israel. Through it all, he had no purpose other than fulfilling the promises he made to Adam and Eve, the patriarchs, and a whole host of others along the way, but I digress. Let's quickly wrap up our survey of Moses' account of the third legal agreement the Lord offered the sons of Israel, so that we can move on to look at what the prophet said about the new covenant. Moses goes on in Deuteronomy chapter 31, to describe the parabolic pantomime God orchestrated in which he, as the heir of the promise, had to die so that those he had previously blessed could parabolically inherit what was promised. The text says this. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 1 through 30, my interim translation. Then Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel. And he said to them, I am a hundred and twenty years old today. I am no longer able to go out and come in, so His Majesty has told me, You will not cross over this Jordan. His Majesty your God, is going to cross over in front of you, He will wipe out these nations before you, so that you take possession of their possessions. Joshua is going to cross over before you, just as His Majesty has stated. Then His Majesty will do to them just as He did to Sihon and to Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land, when He wiped them out. And His Majesty will give them up before you, and you must do to them in accordance with all the commandment that I commanded you. Be resolute and unyielding, you must not be afraid or terrified before them, because His Majesty your God is the one who is going with you. He will not leave you alone, and he will not abandon you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him before the eyes of all Israel, Be resolute and unyielding, when you go with this people, into the land about which his majesty swore an oath to their fathers to give it to them, and you will bestow it on them as an inheritance. So his majesty is the one who is going to go before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you alone, and He will not abandon you. You must not be afraid, and you must not be intimidated. Then Moses wrote down this teaching and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi, the ones who carried the coffin of the legal agreement of His Majesty, as well as to all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of seven years, at the appointed time in the year of the cancellation of debts, at the feast of the temporary shelters, when all Israel goes in to see the face of His Majesty your God, at the place that He will choose, you will proclaim this teaching, right in front of all Israel in their hearing. Congregate the people, the men, and the women, and the little ones, and temporary residents, who are in your gates, in order that they may listen and in order that they may learn, so that they are afraid of His Majesty your God, and stand watch, to act in accordance with all the words of this teaching. Then their sons who have not known it will hear it and learn to fear His Majesty your God, 
All the days that you are living on the ground to which you are about to cross over the Jordan to take possession of it. Then His Majesty said to Moses, Guess what, the days for you to die are near. Call Joshua, and take up your positions in the tent of the appointed time, so that I may give him a command. So Moses and Joshua went and took up their positions in the tent of the appointed time. Then His Majesty appeared in the tent in the pillar of a cloud, and the pillar of a cloud stood beside the entrance of the tent. Then His Majesty said to Moses, Guess what? You are going to lie down with your fathers, then this people will rise up and participate in the Zonah rituals, following the gods of the foreigner in his midst in the land where he is going. Then he will abandon me and make my legal agreement, the one that I cut with him, null and void. Then my anger will become inflamed against him on that day, and I will abandon them, and I will hide my face from them so that he is consumed. When many bad and distressing things find him, on that day he will say, have not these bad things found me because my God is not within me? But I will definitely hide my face on that day because of all the bad that he did when he faced toward other gods. So now write this song down for yourselves, and make the sons of Israel learn it. Put it in their mouth so that this song becomes a witness for me against the sons of Israel, when I bring him into the ground flowing with milk and honey about which I swore an oath to his fathers. But he will eat and be satisfied and get fat and face toward other gods, and they will become their slaves and treat me with contempt. So he will make my legal agreement null and void. Then, when many bad and distressing things find him, it will happen that this song will respond before him as a witness, because it will not be forgotten from the mouth of his seed, because I will know the thing he has formed, the one that he is making today, before I bring him into the land about which I swore an oath. Then Moses wrote this song on that day, and he made the sons of Israel learn it. And he gave a commandment to Joshua, son of Nun, and said, Be resolute and unyielding because you must bring the sons of Israel into the land about which I swore an oath to them, and I will be with you. So it happened that, when Moses finished writing the words of this teaching on a scroll until they were complete, then Moses commanded the Levites who were carrying the coffin of the legal agreement of His Majesty saying, Take this scroll of the teaching and place it beside the coffin of the legal agreement of His Majesty your God, and it will be there as a witness against you, because I know your rebellion and your hard neck. Guess what? You have been rebellious against His Majesty while I am still alive with you today, how much more after my death? Congregate for me all the elders of your branches and your overseers, so that I may speak these words in their hearing, and call the sea of waters, and the earth to testify against them. Because I know that you will definitely become totally corrupt after my death, and you will turn aside from the way that I commanded you and something bad will befall you in the last days, because you will do the thing that is bad in the eyes of His Majesty to exasperate Him with the thing that your hands made. Then Moses spoke the words of this song in the hearing of the whole congregation of Israel until they were complete. So now that you know the song of Moses was an integral part of the parabolic pantomime in which the heir of the promise dies so that others have an opportunity to inherit what was promised, it only seems fair that you know some folks are going to be singing the song of Moses when the end of the age rolls around. Revelation chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, HSSB Then I saw another tremendous and amazing sign in heaven. Seven messengers who have the last seven lashes, because the rage of the living God was completed by them. And I saw something like a sea made of glass that had been mingled with fire, and standing on the sea that was made of glass were those who triumph, over the beast, and over his image, and over the number of his name, 
those who are holding the harps of the living God. And they were singing the song of Moses, the slave of the living God, and the song of the little lamb, saying, Your works are tremendous and amazing, Your Majesty the living God, the Almighty, Your ways are right and true, the King of the Gentiles, Your Majesty, who would definitely not be afraid and glorify Your name. Because You alone are devout because all the Gentiles will come and pay homage in your presence, because your legal requirements have become well known. That passage is a preview of coming attractions, but anyone who seeks to participate in those festivities needs to keep one thing in mind. You can't really say you are singing a song, unless you know what it means. Therefore, I'll give you an interim translation of the song so you can see it doesn't just tell it like it was. It told it like it was going to be, even before it came to be. As you read what Moses wrote, you might want to ask yourself, is he talking about me? Just a thought. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 through 52, my interim translation. Give ear. O sea of waters, and I will speak. Then the earth will hear the statements of my mouth. My instruction will mist like rain, my statements will flow down like the dew, like droplets on green grass, and like soaking rain showers on vegetation. When I proclaim His Majesty's name, attribute greatness to our God, the Rock. The deeds He has done are without defect because all his ways are a decision based on the truth, by the God of truth, and without any deviance. He is one who is impartial and upright. A slime pit is for him, not his sons, their defect is a distorted and perverted generation. Would you cause this for his majesty, senseless and not wise people? Is he not your father, the one who acquired you? He will make you and prepare you, remember the days of eternal burning. Understand the years of generation after generation. Ask your father about it, and he will tell you, your elders, and they will say to you. When Elyon bestows an inheritance on Gentiles, when he separates the sons of Adam, he will set up the boundaries for peoples, according to the number of the sons of Israel. Because his majesty's share is his people, Jacob is the region of his inheritance. He will find him in the earth, a wilderness, even in the howling wasteland of a desolate region. He will surround him, he will provide him understanding, he will guard him like the pupil of his eye. He will wake up his nest like a griffin vulture, he will hover over his young birds, he will spread out his wings, he will take him he will carry him on his flight feathers. His majesty alone will lead him, and there will not be any foreign god with him. He will make him ride above earth's high places, so that he may eat the yield of Shaddai, he will make him suck honey from a crag, even oil from flint rock, curds from cattle and milk from a flock, along with the fat of young rams and rams, the sons of a snake and billy goats, along with the fat of the kidneys of wheat, and you will drink fermenting wine, the blood of a grape. Then Jeshurun will grow fat and become obese, you will grow fat, you will become thick, you will be flabby, then he will forsake the God who made him, and he will treat the rock of his salvation foolishly. They will make him jealous with strangers, they will exasperate him with abominations. They will sacrifice communal offerings to the demons, not God. Gods whom they have not known, new ones will come from within, your fathers had no terror of them. You will fail to remember the rock who engendered you, and you will forget the God who went through labor with you. Then His Majesty will see, and He will treat you with contempt, because of the exasperating activity of His sons and His daughters. Then he will say, I will hide my face from them, I will see what their outcome will be, 
because they are a generation of perverse ones, sons in whom there is nothing that is true. They will make me jealous by what is not God, they will exasperate me with their delusions. So I will make them jealous by what is not a people, I will exasperate them with a senseless nation, because a fire will be kindled by my anger, and it will keep burning, as far as the lowest parts of the sea of El, and it will consume the earth and her produce, and set afire the foundations of mountains. I will sweep bad things up on them, I will finish off my arrows on them. Against those emaciated by famine and consumed by flaming arrow, I will send both a bitter stinging rain and the teeth of beasts, along with the rage of things that slink back into the dust. A sword will cause bereavement on the outside, but on the insides, absolute terror. Both chosen son and virgin, one who is nursing, along with grey haired man, I will say, I will cut them into pieces. I will make their memory keep Sabbath, away from mortal man, if it were not for the exasperating activity of an enemy, I would reside temporarily, so that his adversaries not recognize, so that they not say, Our hand is raised up, and his majesty has not put all this together, because their plans are a nation going to hell, and there is not any understanding in them. If only they were wise. They would gain insight into this song, they would understand their outcome. How could one pursue a thousand, and two make ten thousand flee, if not that their rock had sold them, and his majesty had shut them up in prison, because their rock is not like our rock, and our enemies are those who make decisions, because their vine is from the vine of Sodom, and from the cultivated fields of Gomorrah. His grapes are poisonous grapes, they have bitter clusters. Their wine is the rage of sea serpents, and a venomous poison of cobras. Is it not stored with me, sealed up in my storehouses? Vengeance and retribution are mine, for a time when their foot slips, because the day of their catastrophe is near, and things gotten ready beforehand are moving quickly toward them because his majesty will adjudicate his people's case, and he will feel sorry for his slaves, because he will see that a hand has gone away, and there is nothing held back or abandoned. Then he will say, Where are their gods, the rock in whom they took refuge? Who will eat the fat of their communal sacrifices? Who will drink the wine of their libations? Who will rise up and help you? Who will be a hiding place for you? See now that I, I am He, and there is not any God with me. I put to death, and I keep alive, I strike with a perfect blow, and I heal, and there is not anyone who can snatch anyone out of my hand, because I will raise up my hand to the sea of waters, and I will say, I am alive for a burning eternity. If I sharpen the lightning flashes of my sword, and my hand takes hold of a decision based on the truth, I will pay back vengeance to my adversaries, and I will settle up by giving it to those who hate me, I will get my arrows drunk on blood, and my sword will consume flesh, on the blood of one pierced and a captive, on the poison of an enemy's representatives. Shout joyfully Gentiles, his people, because he will avenge the blood of his slaves, and he will pay back vengeance to his adversaries, and he will atone for his ground, his people. Then Moses came and spoke all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hosea, son of Nun. When Moses finished speaking all these words to all Israel, then he said to them, Take to heart all the words that I am testifying against you today because you must command your sons to stand watch over, to act in accordance with all the words of this teaching, because he is not an empty word, because he is your life, and by this word you may extend your days on the ground, where you are crossing over the Jordan to take possession of it. Then his majesty spoke to Moses that very same day, saying, Go up into this mountain of the Abram, 
Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, which is in front of Jericho, and see the land of Canaan, which I am going to give to the sons of Israel as property. Then you must die there on the mountain that you are climbing and be rounded up to your people, just as your brother Aaron died on Mount Hor, and was rounded up to his people, because you too betrayed my trust in the midst of the sons of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, wilderness of Zin, because you did not treat me as holy in the midst of the sons of Israel. So you will see the land right out in front of you, but you will not go in there to the land that I am giving to the sons of Israel.